Hello, good afternoon. Got one faithful viewer in first. Hi, Tanya. And here we go. Welcome in. We're going to get started in just a couple minutes here, a minute or two. A few more people coming in. Biggest crowd today, not like our chat GPT sessions, but all the same, very informational. So this is going to be a good one. I think so, Jacob. I, I think uh, hybrid work is here to stay. What do you think? You know, I don't think it's going anywhere. I think it's, uh, you know, it went to the full remote model. And then as people started to come back into office, I think the hybrid was one that a lot of people think fits best. And it makes sense. I think so. You know, I don't think it's going anywhere. You meet one or two days out of the week to really come together and collaborate. And on other days, maybe you work on other things singularly at home. So definitely some pluses and minuses, you know. Sure. But um on balance, I you know, I don't think it matters what we think. I think that's just the reality. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's right. changed everything in terms of hiring people and um and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. That is right. Well, you know what? I suppose we can go ahead and get this started and let folks trickle in as they come. All right. Well, welcome, folks. Thank you. And welcome to uh, Productivity Tips in a Hybrid Workforce. Um, I just want to let everybody know Thank you for coming today. And, and before we get into it, just check out our upcoming slide or our upcoming um, event here. And this is definitely going to be one you don't want to miss. My name is Jacob Heath, by the way. We skipped over a slide. I'm Jacob Heath, account manager with CompuWorks alongside mm -hmm. Alan here. And um, our next event coming up after this one, Chat GPT as a business tool. So if you were here last month, you saw an introduction to Chat GPT. Um, I'm sure a few of you were. It was a very popular one, and I, you know, I assume this one will be just as popular. This is kind of integrating that tool into your business and your everyday workplace. So definitely going to be one that you don't want to miss. And put that one on the calendars. You can always sign up on our website as well. It's CompuWorks.biz. Um, let's see. So a few pieces of etiquette here for people who haven't joined before. Um, you know, you can always use the Q&A button for any questions, and that's right at the bottom next to the chat feature here that you might be familiar with. We'll try to get to as many questions as we can during the webinar, but if we miss you, we'll always have a few, a few minutes at the end of the presentation to get to those questions as well. And lastly, we typically like to follow up with a survey to get your feedback on this webinar and also some ideas you might have for future topics. So we really appreciate that feedback. The survey comes out typically 24 hours after this session. So be on the lookout in your inbox for that one. We look forward to your feedback. Um, before we get started, I'd just like to introduce you to CompuWorks founding partner, Alan Bauman. Hi, Alan. Hey. So I think uh, there might be a little bit of a delay in getting that survey out. Our survey uh, master is on vacation this week, so she'll probably get that out first thing first thing next week. Um, but you know, I'll tell you the chat GPT session that we ran last month it definitely encouraged a lot of uh, discussion. Um, there's so many issues around it that you know I'm not sure that I was really thinking about before going through the session. So um, you know, there's some controversy around some of it and. You know, I'm I'm really interested in seeing you know what Joe Lynn has cooked up for us here in terms of the the business application of it. Um, so definitely would be a good session. But today, you know, productivity tips for hybrid workforce. We were just chatting here, Jacob and I, that you know we don't think hybrid work is going away. Um, I'm not sure if anybody out there sort of disagrees with that. Obviously, it depends on what kind of business you're in. Um, but I think it's it's the reality for a lot of us anyway. It certainly is a reality for us at CompuWorks. Uh, on any given day, 
how would you think there's maybe 50 60 percent of the folks are in the office or maybe a little more than that jacob no nope, we're not hearing you Oh, double muted there. Yeah, I would oh, say so. Go. People are constantly moving around, and the the hybrid aspect allows you to kind of jump on wherever you need to. Yep, yep. And of course, our business, or at least parts of it, lend itself to that pretty nicely. So, um, but uh, we're joined again uh, today by uh, by Joe Lynn Reen. Joe Lynn uh, has been uh, our faithful uh, uh, instructor here for the past couple of years, and come to really. Uh, enjoy her sessions and, and depend on her. And I know that a lot of folks, we get a lot of great comments on, on Joe Lynn. So we're happy to have you here again. Joe Lynn, Thank, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I was listening to the conversation. I had a couple of things I wanted to get ready to show everybody today, but I was listening to the to Ellen and Jacob talk about the um, hybrid work. I honestly don't think it's going anywhere either. Um, you know, we think about what we did a few years back when we had the COVID situation and everybody had to move to more of a remote workforce. And we have trickled back, as Jacob was saying, kind of into uh, kind of working at home, working um, in the office and um, organizations really have um, wanted to accommodate the needs of the co-workers more. Um, I think that as an organization, you know, as a business owner, we have to really stop and think what's going to be the best uh, for not only our customer service, but also for the employees at hand as well. So things have definitely changed and I think they're going to continue to be that way for the future as well. So when it comes to this topic of working in a hybrid environment, you know, what exactly does that mean to everybody? Well, it can actually be different. You know, the hybrid work is not the same for every organization. Um, definitely having policies and procedures in place is a good idea so that it's documented as to what your policies are. So um, when Alan mentioned the HR side of things, when you go to hire someone, I'm seeing more and more on resumes now, they're putting their hybrid experience. <laughs> um, something that I'm starting to see more on resumes is kind of crazy to think, but you know, the way that people apply for a job is totally different. You know, we don't have, you know, I'm going to go down to your office and I'm going to do an interview. It, that typically isn't the case on how we are conducting those interviews these days. We usually start in a hybrid situation. So it's used for a lot of different aspects of our business, whether it's working with our clients, it's working with, you know, customer support with a vendor, uh, whatever the case is, we're not all in the same community anymore either. We can't always hire exactly the right people from one specific location of the world. So we do end up working with people from globe, around the globe, not just our next door neighbors. So when it comes to the hybrid situation, we've really been doing it prior to COVID, but it really became very relevant now that we've kind of gotten back into that workforce. Um, I did some training with a company, I won't say who they are, but they're, I was in um, Portland. Um, they're an organization that has rental properties all over the world uh, that you can rent for short periods of time. You might get the hint from that, but um, I was at their organization at their um, headquarters in Portland doing some training. And when I walked in, I was just shocked at how they have things set up. They have yurts inside the building. Everybody brings their animal. You know, they have uh, a work area. You pick where you want to work in the building. If you want to go outside, you work from outside. If you want to have a meeting in a specific location, they reserve that location for that specific time period. If they want to be sitting in a lounge chair or put uh, getting putting themselves in a hammock, they had all types of environments. And that's kind of what this image on my slide is actually showing that we need to be flexible and be able to communicate and work with people from all different types of environments. We may have, you know, 10 people that are in the office today, but the other half of our organization might be working from different remote locations, whether they're just working from home in the same city or they're working from another state or another country. We need to accommodate for that. 
So we want to talk today about, you know, kind of what are the tools, what are the things that we need to think about when it comes to an organization adjusting and working in this hybrid environment that we have these days. So we're going to talk about some different software tools that are definitely available that we need. And we'll talk briefly about the kind of the equipment that kind of goes behind the scenes for us to be successful in how that is all going to work. So let me go ahead and get some information uh, shared on my screen here with you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be starting out in my Microsoft 365 login. Now, I don't know if you're a user of desktop versions, if you're using online versions. Uh, when we talk about hybrid, a lot of people are also using their phone. So I get notifications if I have something coming through on Teams, I'm getting notified on my computer and I'm also getting notified on my phone. So I'm going to talk a little, about, little bit about these notifications because we need to be able to communicate and collaborate regardless of where someone is sitting. You know, they're not going to be in the office next to me in the cubicle or down the hallway from me. Um, even if they are, I could chat with them. <laughs> I could be use, using the tools that we're going to talk about today. So I chat with people, even if they are in the next room. You know, it's kind of like I, when my kids first got their cell phones, they'd text me from the lower level, you know, what time's dinner, mom, you know, those kind of things. And it's like, we, we're still doing those kind of things. That isn't anything new to anybody. Those are things that we are still doing here today. So it can be across the globe. It can be in the next room. It doesn't matter. We usually are using the same type of communication because I might be talking with a group of people. A lot of times we're doing group chats and I may be talking to Alan, Jacob, and another person, and we can all be in separate locations. It doesn't matter. You know, Alan and Jacob can be in the same office building together. I say office building because they might not be in the same floors, et cetera, um, but everybody can be a spread anywhere they need to be. We want to have a comfortable, secure work environment for whatever type of work it is someone does. A lot of customer service is being done now from remote locations. So when we talk about having a building or having a facility, whether it's going to be a home environment or an office environment, we talk about having what are called brainstorm rooms, we'll have focus rooms, or we'll have meeting rooms. Those are very common uh, for people to use. Now, does a brainstorm room have to be a physical room in your building? Well, it could be. It could be a room that is set aside that is a smaller room that has equipment to have it set up so that we're going to be on a camera with other people that are going to be remote. We could be using Zoom like we are today. We could be using Microsoft Teams. We also could have a focus room. A focus room is really more related to, I need to focus on something. And I don't know if you've seen the latest updates to Outlook, but Outlook actually has focus built into it now where it was only part of Windows 11, but there is a new feature when you go into your calendar now, um, there's a new icon at the top left saying add focus time. And I actually added focus time for after the session today because I have some things that I need to really work on and I want that focus time where people aren't going to be chatting with me in different things. So focus time is a very important aspect of no matter where it is we are working because we have to be careful with interruptions. Uh, I have a whole nother class talking about how to handle interruptions and different things, but um, having a focus area a focus area is a great idea. We can turn on this focus time through Outlook, go to a specific focus area, have access to everything that we need to use while we're actually putting together that project we're working on, working on the tasks that we're assigned to, whatever that case might be that you're working on, uh, getting ready for an interview for the next couple of days or whatever the case is. Now, we also, of course, need to have meeting rooms. Meeting rooms are, are usually equipped with certain um, new modern equipment these days uh, where we will have, of course, a high, uh, high speed internet connection. We will have cameras. 
Uh, we can have uh, the way that they're set up these days are very different. Uh, sometimes we're doing the horseshoe because um, we're able to take advantage these days of having a conference room look when we are using applications like Teams or Zoom to communicate. And I don't know how many meetings I'm actually doing. I should get an average because I do 99% of my meetings are through Teams or Zoom. Very, very rarely am I going to someone's office these days and meeting with them, even if they are in the same city as me. I'm still doing online meetings with people. It's kind of crazy to think that that's the, the way of the world. Can I tell you one thing that I truly miss about being in the office, though? Potluck days. <laughs> Um, I remember being in the office environment and everybody had a potluck on certain days for different events and the, you know, treats that people would bring in for their birthdays and things. Those, I miss those. Um, but having cameras is essential because we want to still make sure that we are actually seeing people. You know, um, that's one thing that people complain about is the interactivity that we have with people, you know, that face-to-face -face communication. Well, we can still have that in an environment with cameras. The more you do it, the more comfortable you are. And I feel like I'm sitting in the same room when I talk with Alan and Jacob, because, you know, we make it a very comfortable environment every time that we do a meeting or we do a training session, it feels like we're together. And I think it's important to do that when you're in your hybrid workplace as well. Okay. Carolyn, now, just let's, a question yeah. for you, because I, I, you know, yeah. I have some opinions about some of this stuff, but I feel like if you're going to be doing a virtual meeting that everybody needs their own camera and oh, their own microphone for the most part, I mean, yes. sometimes you can't avoid it, but I, it feels to, to me like the, the sort of the worst kind of meeting is where you have a little you have like a conference room and then one camera focused on everybody and it's really hard to hear them and hard to see them and yes. you know whereas you probably would be better off just sitting at your desk i know it feels weird even if because mm -hmm. you, know, you might be in the same office with people but i actually feel like it's a better quality meeting if everybody just had their own camera and, own, and their own headset well and one of the things to think about with that is they could actually be in that meeting room together with their own equipment so technically, they could bring their laptop into that conference room and still be in, uh, connected individually. Mm -hmm. But I do need to mention there is some um, equipment. So hardware has changed. Um, so when we build a hybrid meeting room, the way that they're designed now is different. So it actually will have better microphones. It has better cameras. It can have individual pictures of everybody in the room. So these cameras are built to focus on the profile of the person, persons, I should say, that are actually in that room. Mm -hmm. Now, the equipment has started to come down a little bit in price, but it's still pricey. But if this is something that you're doing all the time, highly recommend it. But an alternative until you do that is everybody can go into the same meeting room, bring their own laptop and individually connect. The difficulty that you're going to have with that and the difficulty in an environment with one camera is that if they go to talk, having a headset can be essential. We get some conflicts sometimes with the sound. So we all would need to be on a headset to help control that. Um, when you're in rooms together. Um, we have to make sure that uh, we're not conflicting when it comes to the speakers, because then you get that sound, that noise, <laughs> that right. background noise that you don't want. And one of the difficulties in a conference room setting, because I do a lot of training this way, um, they'll be all in a training room together and I'm a remote instructor. So they can be sitting in a conference room together and I have one camera that is focusing on everybody and they'll mute the whole group. And then when I ask them a question, they'll unmute. Well, the person sitting furthest away, I can't hear them. So what's happening with this new equipment is the equipment has microphones that are going to be positioned in different locations to make it much easier. So it's going to be more specific on the individual that is speaking at the time, similar to what we have with um, when we go into Zoom or into Teams, and we could say we only want to show the person talking at the moment, we can do that as well. 
So that equipment is, is being upgraded on a regular basis right now so that we can actually be using equipment that is specifically built for hybrid work, okay? Lots of cool stuff out there. I've been seeing, and I watch a lot of videos on it. I personally don't have any, but I've been in organizations that definitely use the equipment and it is unbelievable. I got the shivers thinking about it. It's so cool. <laughs> um, I actually just, just did a training a couple of weeks back in Iowa and they were set up hybrid because we had people from the office, but then we were also doing training with remote people. So it was fantastic. It worked great. So let's talk about some of the tools that we can actually use when it comes to having these brainstorming rooms, these focus times, or these meeting rooms. One of the big things is having the right software and of course the tools in the background with permissions and security to make sure that no matter where the person is located at, they're gonna be able to communicate just like if we were sitting in the same room together. You know, where I could walk over and say, hey, Jacob, can I have access to that file? I don't want to have to, you know, I hate to say it, but I don't want to have to physically get up, go to Jacob and ask for that. I would most likely chat with him. I would do other communications than calling him on a phone if I don't need to. Um, and by the way, I still do phone calls. Don't get me wrong. I still do phone calls, but I got to tell you, I do them through Teams. Because way too many times I'm on my actual phone talking to somebody and they're like, well, can you show me that? Uh, sure. Let me take a picture of it on my phone and I'll send it to you. It's like, no, I want to be able to show them my screen right now. So having the ability to do a call through Microsoft Teams has saved my life so many times. Love it. Alan, did you have a, a comment on I, that? I was just going to I totally agree with you, Jolyn. And I, I sort of wonder about the future of like dedicated phone systems. I, I so rarely pick up our business phone. Right. You know, if I want to communicate with somebody in, in our office, I'm going to ping them via Teams, a, a chat or, a, you know, a Teams meeting. Right. You know, and we can have a phone that comes into like reception, et cetera, that can actually be then transferred to an actual mobile device, you know, or to the computer, et cetera. So there's a lot of alternatives to those types of systems these days. So hardware is keeping up right now with what we need. You know, sometimes you have to have the hardware, then we build the software so that the software works with the hardware because they have to play nice together. Um, so the software is starting to be updated. So by the end of this year, beginning of first quarter 2024, there's a lot of changes that are actually coming. And I actually saw one of them. We I just had an update the other day and I saw some new things coming into like Power Automate, Microsoft Power Automate already has some co-pilot built into it for testing purposes. So I am like ex so excited for the future because we're not going to go back to the way that we used to work. We're going to continue to move forward with needing to have tools that will be connect software tools that are going to allow us to communicate whatever works best for the coworkers. So let's walk through a couple of what I'm talking about. So when it comes to for me, in general, um, I use SharePoint a lot. Um, and I know a lot of organizations are using SharePoint. So we can use SharePoint as a collaboration tool, especially if the SharePoint site has been built as a team site. Because of course we have communication sites versus team sites. So I'm actually going to open a team site that was built in SharePoint. So, and by the way, I'm gonna have my other computer open the same exact one because this is where we're gonna collaborate. So when I come into SharePoint, I'm gonna see everything related to this department or if it's my hub of my intranet, whatever, I can see any news that the company has posted that everybody needs to know. Otherwise, if it's individual for my department, I could see anything related to my department by coming to my SharePoint site. From there, I have access to collaborating with my coworkers, whether it's my department or my whole organization. 
So on the left hand side, I'm going to go into this document library called legal documents, because a very important part of being hybrid is we need access to the same files. You know, I can't be having all of my co-workers saved to their C drives. We don't work in that type of environments anymore. We need to be cloud based. So when we talk about cloud file storage, SharePoint and OneDrive are really the wave of the world. I still have a couple of clients that are in the process of migrating from network drives, but pretty much everybody has been moving over and getting into SharePoint for these reasons, because it's easier to maintain. It's built to do it. <laughs> it's built for sharing, hence the name SharePoint. So when we come into a a document library where it's a cloud based file storage, whoever has rights to this location on the site has rights to these documents. And it doesn't matter if I'm accessing them through my phone, through my laptop, and I'm in Wisconsin, and Jacob is in Maine. He was just visiting in Maine, and he could be in a different state, and we could both be working on the same file together and accessing the same information at the same time. This is the world we live in these days. So we can be creating a new document from here that instantly everyone will have access to. We could be updating existing information. We have access to the history of those files. And by the way, Excel has been updated now as well <laughs> with the capability of seeing changes that other people have made. So some of the comments and the questions that I get a lot with, OK, everybody has rights to this document library. Isn't that scary? What if somebody deletes something? What if they add something or make a change to something? How am I going to know that that has happened? Well, one of my favorite features built into SharePoint document libraries is the ability to do what are called alerts. So we can actually set up an alert that says if something happens in this document library, or we could do it based on a specific file. So per file or for the entire document library. I'm going to go to the menu at the top of this document library. I'm going to click on the extended menu, the more, and I'm going to click on alert me. I can set up an alert that gets sent based on changes that have happened in the in the entire document library. So I can give it a name up at the top. It, the alerts will be sent to me by default. They're going to come via email. But under the change type, this is referring to what types of changes do I want to be alerted about? I'm going to say I want to be alerted if exist existing items are modified or items are deleted, et cetera. We can choose exactly what we want to be alerted about. Then where it says, send me the alert when. So you can choose when you want to get the alerts. You can get them right away every time something happens, or you can say, I just want to be alerted when someone else changes a document that was created by me. So we can actually choose which options we want. We can have it be immediate. We can say, I want a weekly summary. I want a daily summary, whatever it is that you decide. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. What's going to happen then is if anybody goes into that same specific location, which of course I'm going to do here on my other computer, I'm going to have somebody go in and make a change to a file um, to that in this document library so that you can see I will get a notification. The email notification that I get will come directly to my Outlook. So what's going to happen is I will get an email notification letting me know that the alert was set up. So when I talk about the setting up the alert, I got an email message letting me know that the alert was set up. So here's my alert saying alert legal documents was successfully added. So now when my other computer makes a change, I'm going to be alerted about this change that they just made. Okay, so it doesn't auto save when you're in cloud based file storage, SharePoint or OneDrive. And now I'm going to end up getting an email alert letting me know in a moment that someone has made a change to a file in that document library. 
So it takes a second for it to be delivered, but it will come here in a second. So to me, that has really been a great tool to use in a hybrid situation. Now also, we of course have version history. So version history is helpful when it comes to seeing what was changed. You know, so if I added this HR policies Excel spreadsheet and I wanna kind of take a look at, was this changed before? I can right click on the file. I can actually go into the version history and this is gonna show me any changes that had been done. I should say, it doesn't show me the changes themselves, but it shows me all the different versions of this file. It tells me the date and time the file was modified and who modified it. So I'm actually going to make a change myself to this file. I'm gonna open up this HR policies and I'm going to have my other computer open it at the same time because I might have been chatting through Teams with my other coworker saying, hey, we need to get this HR policies uh, figured out. We need to kind of get this updated. So I'm actually going to have my other computer open the same file. I'm going to come in and start making some changes to this. And right away, I see that my other computer is in this file. Uh, I see they are on cell A2, and at the top right of the window, I could see their profile circle. So I could have five people in this file with me at the same time. This live collaboration capability that we have is great for hybrid situations. It's even good if we're in the same office together. So even if Jacob and I are in the same building together, we could be working on this HR policies together. He doesn't have to drag his desktop computer or his laptop computer to my office, and then both of us kind of talk about it and one person does the work. He could be doing what he's thinking of, creating another sheet, whatever. We could both be in there at the same time working. So I'm gonna have my other uh, computer actually create a new sheet so that person could be on a different sheet doing things and I could be on this sheet making changes. So this ability of being able to have this live co collaboration with everything is very essential. They could be using the online version of Excel, they can be using the desktop version of Excel, or they could be using Excel from their mobile phone. It doesn't matter, we could still be doing live collaboration. So one of the features that I truly love is I want to be able to collaborate with people regardless of their physical location. And I want to be able to access this information. Like if I had to change my work hours for the day, and maybe I'm not going to start till three and be done at nine at night. I don't want to have to worry about going into the office at that time when nobody else is there and you know having a situation where I can't talk with everybody. I could still be communicating with people during that time frame and it doesn't matter where I'm located at. And let me show you a little bit of what I mean by that. So beyond SharePoint, OneDrive, um, throwing in a little bit more to this, when we talk about the collaboration side, of course, we could be doing comments and notes and things like that within a file, but we could also be chatting with someone. So I'm going to go to my chat on the left hand side in Microsoft Teams. I can go to a previous chat that I had with one person or a group and we can be communicating together. But what if I know that person is not available right now, which by the way, that was an update to Teams recently is when you go to chat with somebody, if they're not available, it's gonna actually tell you. Their profile circle is gonna tell you also like it always has. But if I go in to chat with uh, the student one, my other computer, oops, I'm sorry, I had, how is it going on that file? What if they're not available right now and I know they're not available because it's after their work hours or they're still on vacation and they won't be back until tomorrow? You can delay the delivery of the chat. So if I'm working on something in SharePoint and I want to just send a quick chat to somebody, all I have to do is go to their profile circle, start a chat or go into Teams, go back to a previous chat, however. And if I find that they are not available right now, 
I can delay when this message gets sent by going to the send icon at the bottom right. You can do a right click. We can then schedule a date. So if I know she's coming back tomorrow morning, I'll click on tomorrow morning and I want to give her some time to get in the office and get settled. I'm going to say I want it to send at 9 a.m. As soon as I click send at scheduled time, that chat will actually go at that time, that date and that time. So take advantage of these features because not everybody's going to work the same hours. And I don't know about you, but I hear my phone dinging through the night and I feel like I should be waking up and answering it. This helps with that <laughs> because we don't all work the same time zones, et cetera. So having these tools available through our applications is essential. So I do that a lot if I'm working on a file and I need to ask somebody something. Uh, I'm updating this file. Can you tell me what this is going to be? Blah, blah, blah. I use the chat capability a lot. Okay. So when I'm in a file, um, it doesn't matter if the file is stored on any cloud, whether it's on the SharePoint document library that I was working with, or if it's in Microsoft Teams, or if the file was stored on my OneDrive, it can be shared and live collaboration can be happening no matter where it is stored, as long as it's in a cloud. We weren't capable of doing that back with our network drives, which I think network drives really started to take a huge shift three years ago. Um, also, you know, a lot of things changed that back then. We need the ability for that live collaboration. You know, I need to be able to talk with someone and it isn't always going to be through a phone call because I could be on a meeting call with somebody and let's say I'm talking to a client and I need to find out some information from our accounting department. I could actually go to Teams and chat with the person from the accounting department and not have it be interrupting at all what I'm doing in my Zoom or my Teams meeting. So we want to know what tools should our employees be using and how do we want them using them? So kind of having a policy, giving them some training on how to use these tools. Um, the best, you know, the best world would be everybody understands everything. We're not going to have that. Um, I don't know one person that understands everything. So having a quick, easy way for people to get to information if they need to look something up. That's where Share SharePoint can come in. Um, I could go back to my SharePoint home. Uh, for my clinic site, and I could actually have a section that is for training. So we're having them use these document libraries. We're having them use Microsoft Teams. Do they know how to use these tools? Having a page or a section within your SharePoint site of how to use these tools is very beneficial. Also explaining to people why we have the guidelines. Here's the guidelines for being hybrid workers. Here's how you use the tools. I know several people that um, in my local area, they all work from home. They were never taught how to use their tools. They were just given new tools and people switch from one program to another and they really weren't taught how to use those. If we want to work consistently and we want to be able to have security, et cetera. We need to make sure that everybody is understanding why we do things and the uh, really kind of the best practices. Like when should I chat? When should I email? When should I post something in Teams? But before I go too much further on this, I do want to mention OneDrive. So we can access OneDrive. So instead of people saving their files to their C drive, it is best if they can save them to their OneDrive. I can open OneDrive online and have access to all files that I have saved to my, per, my business OneDrive. I can even share those files with other people. So if I have one coworker that needs to see this file uh, that I have called loop task list, if I need to share that with just one person, I can do that by clicking on the universal icon for share. I can click on the share icon, 
choose who I want to share this with, and they will have access to this file, even if they're not, you know, because nobody else has access to my OneDrive. OneDrive is for you specifically. But if you need to share it with someone in your organization, you most certainly can. They can open the file and do live collaboration with you. So not just SharePoint files, can we can do live collaboration. OneDrive, we can as well. But a lot of times for me, I access my files by actually going to my, let me show you, I go to my file explorer. Because in SharePoint, in OneDrive, I can have access to both of those files in my OneDrive through File Explorer. So when I come to File Explorer, I clicked on my OneDrive, and then I can see all of my folders in File Explorer. I can even see the ones that have this little chain link. These are actually coming directly from SharePoint. Here's my legal documents that I was just in from SharePoint. If I open this folder, here's all those files that I was working on, but I see them and access them directly through File Explorer. So it can be extremely easy because everybody's familiar with working with File Explorer. If we have a link set up, a shortcut set up through OneDrive for our SharePoint, we have access to those files directly here. And one of the benefits for that is what if I know um, I'm going to have some construction going on in my area. I'm at home. I work from home right now. And I know that they sent a notice around saying we're going to have an interruption in service in the afternoon on Friday. But I need to be working on some files on Friday. Here in my OneDrive through File Explorer, I can go to this legal documents SharePoint folder or document library, I should say, and I can right click on it and I can say always keep on this device. What that means is even if I don't have an internet connection at the time, I can open up a file from that location. Once I have internet connection again, it's going to automatically sync it back up. So it will sync it back up into SharePoint, which is accessible through OneDrive as well. So we want to be able to take advantage of that because those situations will definitely happen at some point. Um, I've had it happen in a work environment and I've lost internet connection, of course, um, in my home office as well. So we have backup options for that. Now, of course, OneDrive and SharePoint have a lot of similar capabilities, but let me actually go to a OneDrive, uh, OneDrive file um, if I right click on a OneDrive file, I'm not going to get the same exact tools I do if I am online in OneDrive or if it were a SharePoint file. So I'm going to open this in OneDrive. So you could see I could view this online in OneDrive or I could simply go back to my online version of OneDrive where I, of course, can access any of my files. I could go to my shared files. I can go to all of my files. And I have different tools available when I right click when I'm here online. So if I right click here, I'm going to get similar features, including the version history here in OneDrive. So a lot of the same features will be available. What I'm not getting, though, is the alert me because I don't need it in OneDrive because it's I'm not sharing. These are my files, so I don't get the alert me. Alert me is only available in SharePoint document libraries. So having these cloud-based access to the files that we need to be working with with our coworkers is definitely essential. But working with Microsoft Teams has been just an absolutely wonderful tool as well. So I'm going to come back into Teams for a minute because Teams gives us access to things across Microsoft 365. SharePoint and Teams have a lot of similarities because when you create a team, it is SharePoint. But what I want to talk about here in Microsoft Teams is, yes, we can chat and I can chat with anybody that I have access to. Um, that's a wonderful tool. 
Um, there's a lot of additional tools with chatting, but it's great to be able to say, you know, I need to get this question answered from somebody and just chat with them. But a big part of using Teams is the meeting side of things. So I'm going to go to my calendar. And on my calendar, which is synced to my Outlook calendar, I can actually create a meeting, either schedule a meeting or do a meeting impromptu, and it can be done directly through Teams. So let's say that I want to do a meeting at 3.30 that is going to be a Teams meeting, and I want it to be about um, bookings. We're going to set up a bookings calendar and I'm going to say that my student one is required to attend. I can actually attach the meeting directly to a channel. So if we're both part of the IT department and it's related to the help desk, I can choose that channel to directly connect this meeting to. I'm going to click send. It's going to invite that person or whoever I invite to that meeting. But we have some new features that are happening with Teams meetings these days. Just to show you some of these great new features, if I go back to my chat on the left hand side, I have a previous meeting that I did and I'm going to um, open up. Let me open up a couple of different ones here just to show you some examples. Um, when I come into a previous meeting, I'm going to see a list on the right hand side of that chat. Um, the history of the meeting and all kinds of details in the tabs at the top. They've added some new features to this. Let me explain. So first, I'm actually seeing all the chats that everybody was doing, kind of the history of what was going on. Because I'm on the chat tab, I see that I actually recorded this as well. Um, but if I go to the files tab up at the top, it's going to show me if there were any files that were shared during that meeting. Or if I go to recap, recap is a new feature that we have with Teams meetings. And recap is going to give me a recap of things that happened during that meeting. Now, it depends on which meeting I'm on. So I have a lot of different meetings over here on the left hand side. So the recap is going to give me a recap based on certain aspects of the meeting. And I also have the recording and transcripts. Now, why do I want to record a meeting? Let's say that I'm doing a meeting with my department. Is everybody in my department going to make the meeting? They may not because somebody might be working with clients. They might be on um, tech support, whatever the case might be. So we want to record the meeting so that they can come back to the actual team's meeting and very quickly and easily have access to the recording so that they know everything that happened during that meeting. So they'll be able to come back to it. If the meeting was conducted through a channel, I can go to the left-hand side into Teams. I can go directly to the channel. So I'm gonna go to IT. I'm gonna go to Help Desk. I can see that bookings appointment right here. And by the way, if I start this, it's going to show a video camera next to the channel and people can click on it to actually access the meeting. Lots of ways to join the meeting. And then as we take meeting notes, uh, we record the meeting, uh, we do whiteboards, we do uh, Q and A's, any of that is then going to be stored with the contents of that meeting. So if somebody misses the meeting, they're going to be able to go back and access that information. Huge benefits on doing your meetings through Microsoft Teams. We can still be doing the chats in the background with somebody else, or we can be chatting, of course, through the Teams meeting like we can do here in our Zoom meetings. They all work similar, but the benefit of using Microsoft Teams is that we can connect directly to a channel and everything related to it is right here in one program. And <laughs> I have a lot of ands to this. We need to be working on collaborating on task lists together as well. 
or other apps in Microsoft, whether it's bookings, it's forms, it's lists, it's websites, it's SharePoint sites. We need to collaborate in a lot of different ways. And when we are in Microsoft Teams, we have access to all of that. If I look at my tabs at the top of this channel, I can go into help desk tasks. This is going to be a shared task list that we have access to for whoever is a member of this team or this channel. So we could be doing live work together. We could have this task list that everybody has access to, whether they're remote or they're working in the same building. It doesn't matter. They're going to have access to these options. And on the left hand side of teams, if I need to focus in on my tasks and the tasks that I've been to assigned to coming from multiple plans, I can go to my apps on the left hand side of teams and I have quick, easy access to all my different Microsoft apps. The ones that I use the most are, are really going to be the and what we consider the most common. Um, I, I could have access to any one of these, though. So there's a big, long list of all of these. But if I just go to the dot, 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 I'm going to see a, a more limited list of my Microsoft apps. And I use tasks by planner and to do because this is going to give me everything I need to be working on, whether it's coming from a shared plan with a group of people or it's coming from my Microsoft to do's, which also can be connected to Outlook. We as a hybrid work and workforce these days need to know what's going on and we need to be able to share that information with other people. So what I can do when I come in here is go directly to assign to me. This is going to limit the list of the tasks that I'm working on that are actually coming from shared planners that I could be working with multiple people on. So we want to find the right applications that are going to be able to help our organization when we are working in these virtual, these kind of hybrid situations. Whether they're in the same building or across the country, it doesn't matter. We need ways to communicate. And I want to mention a feature that I don't think enough people are taking advantage of. No matter if you're using SharePoint, you're using Outlook, you're using Teams, it's called at mentions. At mentions draws attention to a specific person. But when you are in a team, you can go to a post and technically you could be doing an at mention to multiple people at one time. Instead of individual people, we could do an at mention to a group of people. Like I have team owners or I can set up other group at mentions so that we're making sure that the people we're communicating with will be notified of whatever it is that we're posting about. So nobody's going to miss anything. So we want to find which tools are going to be the best choice for us, for us as an organization. So using Microsoft Teams, using SharePoint, using OneDrive, these cloud-based options that we have, and being able to do live collaboration to me has been essential because they really are giving us the ability to be remote if need be. So we can work with people in the office and people from other locations. But the recording part, I really think, I, I don't see enough people using that feature either. <laughs> Between that and at mentions, those are the two that I think people need to start adding into their list of we encourage you to use these features um, because of the fact that I miss meetings sometimes because I'm doing something else. And it's like, can somebody share the meeting notes with me? Was, was it recorded? And usually they're like, oh, well, I'm going to type those up in Word and then I'll send those out to everybody. We don't work in an environment like that anymore. I want to go back and I want to watch the meeting so I know exactly what happened at the meeting. 
And then I also, because we're working as a team together, we need to all know the same information. And I will have access to all of my meeting notes by having them either be available in a channel, depending on if it was connected to a channel or not, or if it was actually part of a Teams meeting through the chat. So I can always get back to my meeting notes regardless. So Microsoft Teams is my go-to for those. So here's my meeting notes that were connected to my team called Microsoft 365. So definitely take advantage of the connectivity that we have. And we don't have to go out and buy all these extra special programs. Microsoft, if you are using 365, it's unbelievable the tools that are built in. Um, we have OneNote, which of course is a shared notebook situation where we don't have to have someone taking notes on a piece of paper and coming back and typing them in someplace. We could have everything in a OneNote notebook where we could be sharing that with everybody from every location. Using Microsoft Lists and using workflows with these can be very, very handy. Microsoft Loop, where we're keeping everybody in the loop, uh, which I have some here in my chat with Microsoft Loop. So it's syncing up my loop options here. So I have a loop task list that whoever I'm chatting with can be adding information to this and it's live. Um, we want to be taking advantage of like planner and to do in Microsoft, even Microsoft bookings, things like that, where people can be scheduling, um, especially for outside and people. So if I work with vendors and different things, they can have access to my bookings calendar so they know exactly when I'm available. Because of course we have work groups and we have shared calendars and Outlook, but my external people that I work with don't have access to those. So we need to make sure that everybody has access to the right software tools that they need, but also the physical equipment, whether it's the equipment in their home office, whether it's going to be in that meeting room, or if it's going to be a focus room, you know, do they have, is there an extra monitor that stays in that room that we can be connecting to? Because usually people need to work with multiple monitors. And I mentioned some of the new equipment that is coming out for uh, doing large meetings, whether you have hybrid people and people on site, there's different camera systems, there's different audio equipment that is now being used. And of course, programs like Zoom and Microsoft Teams are taking advantage of these to give us gallery views. So gallery views are wonderful because then even if we had 50 people, we're still going to be able to see everybody that is actually in the meeting. We can put them in uh, like a stadium look. <laughs> you might have seen that during uh, sports uh, where someone could buy a seat and, you know, be in the virtual room during a basketball game and things like that. That was kind of hilarious how they did that, but that's what we use now. <laughs> We're using that as a regular tool. Um, so the software and the hardware are working together to make sure that we can be using a hybrid situation. So make sure you have good lighting. Make sure that you have the right acoustics. Make sure that you have um, microphones and headsets and uh, those tools available to your end users. Um, I don't know if you can buy too many laptops without a camera these days. If not, make sure that they have the right cameras. Um, you know, having whatever tools it is that they may need. You know, large screen monitors, um, whatever your room needs, make sure that they have the right power options, uh, their HDMI connections, et cetera, so that we can make sure that they have a good connection. There's not going to be any interruption. Uh, we can have, you know, five people in a meeting that are on a screen, and then we can have 10 people in a room together in a horseshoe look, and it can be like we're all sitting in the same room together because of the way that the equipment can pick up who's talking and it can pick up each of the individual people these days. So having the right equipment can be very essential, okay? But the last thing that I wanna mention is the security side. And I'll revert back to talking about Microsoft again, because Microsoft of course has security built in. 
we have several different security options. If we don't want people to be able to, you know, do connections with external sources, only internal coworkers, we have the capabilities of doing that. We can manage things through the cloud. We don't have to physically be going there to work on their equipment and different things. We could do troubleshooting and, you know, look at things and it just makes it so much easier these days based on the uh, the management of the security options that we have built in. So set some rules, train your employees, make sure that they have the security settings that they're going to need, you know, don't lock them out of too many things that they can't do their job. You know, sometimes we lock people out of too much. Uh, sometimes we need to kind of, you know, make sure that a specific coworker has access to what they are needing. You know, and of course, take advantage of those Microsoft tools and teach people how to use those tools, whether it's the hardware and you have instructions right in the room where they're going to be using the hardware or it's instructions for their specific hardware that they're using at their remote location. Okay, lots of cool things coming, coming to a computer near you soon. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, that's great stuff, Jillian. Good, uh, good stuff for sure. Um, kind of I don't opener. see any questions. I don't know if anybody has any last minute um, questions they want to pose. You could just you know use the Q and A button. Um, okay. We'll just kind of wrap up here. Just remind folks uh, the training in. August chat GPT as a business tool. I don't think we've scheduled out beyond that. So we'll be getting to that here uh, soon, but uh, you can go ahead and if you're interested in that session, you can find the registration uh, on our website. Uh, and I am not seeing any other questions. So I think we're ready to wrap it up. Um, thanks again, Joe Lynn. I appreciate Absolutely. you doing this. Jacob, I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for being here, everybody. And hopefully we'll see you next time. Sounds thanks good. all. Thank Take you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.